All right, how's it going, fellow outdoor enthusiasts? This is uh, Outdoor Joe, and I'm going to show you today how to get your how to get property lines that you're going to download from your county GIS website added on to your Garmin uh, GPS device. Now, I use uh, uh, I use this method because I I do a lot of hunting, and I, I like to have an idea of where the property lines are and basically my left and right limits of my uh, of where I can hunt. And I like to have that available on my Garmin GPS. Uh, so what you're going to need is you're going to need your county GIS website, you know, the, the either the parcel address or who owns the address or owns that piece of land. Uh, you're going to need Google Earth. You're going to need Garmin Basecamp. Uh, and if you're not familiar with Garmin Basecamp, Garmin Basecamp is software that basically communicates with your Garmin GPS. Uh, in Garmin Basecamp, you add waypoints, uh, you know, photographs tracks all this good stuff and it'll transfer onto your Garmin GPS and whatever things you've saved on your Garmin GPS will transfer onto your Garmin base camp as well so as an FYI there are uh, commercially available softwares for whatever state that you're hunting in so I mean you can get you know you can spend anywhere from 50 bucks to 100 bucks to get to get property lines or who owns uh, land in, in specific locations or where the public lands are located at but but you know more times than not if you're like myself you don't you're, you don't have a lot of public land or private land that you're hunting you may have one or two parcels that you're going to use so spending 50 bucks to 100 bucks uh, is, isn't really feasible it doesn't make much sense so I'm going to show you how to do this for free uh, what you're going to need to do is is hop on Google and then type in whatever county you're ha hunting on. So county and state. So if you're hunting, you know Lexington, Kentucky. If you're hunting, you know Roswell, Georgia, or in this case we're going to use Arlington, Virginia. Uh, you're going to type that into Google and you're going to type in GIS at the end, right? So GIS. And once you've typed that into Google, you're going to get your your function. It's going to pop up, and what you're looking for is property search. So you're going to click on property search. Uh, and more times than not, you're going to get this disclaimer on there. I think every site, most sites that I've been to have this disclaimer. And you're going to come to this screen. And on this screen, you're going to see that you can search for property uh, via the address uh, more times than not. And then also who owns that property. And there's other different things or other ways that you can search a property. But the two common ones that you're going to see are address and who actually owns that property. So you go and you type that information. And you're going to get a document that's going to look very similar to this. It's going to be, it's going to have who owns a property, how much its value was worth. Uh, you know how much it's been uh, all this other information but what we're interested in and what's more important to us and that we want to see is this map right here uh, this map is what de details what the property lines are for that property and, it, and as you'll see in this <clears throat> this photograph um, you know it's outlined in purple and shaded in kind of a yellowish green color so what you're going to do is you're going to go uh, if you own a Mac uh, typically this is saved as a, a PDF file uh, and the way Macs are is, is, is it's going to open up in this. You click on the PDF file, you save it to your, your computer, and then you're going to open it up. And this is what mine's going to open up to. And, and for, uh, for Mac users, you're going to go to this rectangular selection tool. Because what you want to do is you want to crop out <coughs> the parcel that you're interested in. So I'm going to set up my rectangular tool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to outline the property that I, or the section of property that I'm interested in. Now, this is pretty important here when, you, when you're doing this because when you mark this out you need to have some type of reference point because what you're going to do is you're going to take a snapshot it's going to crop out this piece of property and you're going to have to uh, adjust it onto Google Earth and you need some way of referencing if you're on there prop properly so what I like to use are, are basically man-made structures so you'll see this road right here all right? so the top of this road is going to be my reference point one the bottom of the road here is reference point two uh, this road coming up, that's going to be reference point three, and this building. I like to split buildings because it it makes a nice little uh, lineup, and you can kind of tell a little bit nicer, easier when the when the building lines up. So I like to split buildings. So for this one, I'm splitting the building and this little shed here out as well. So these are also going to be my reference points, and you'll you'll see once I once I start doing it what I'm talking about, and how this becomes very helpful. So I'm going to crop that out. So you'll get this little dialog box, boom. So I've, cro I've cropped out the property. Property's cropped out. Uh, now what I need to do is I need to export it. So uh, for Mac users, I'm going to export. I'm going to name, uh, you know, whatever I need to do. Uh, I'm going to just name it lines. And I need to save it as a JPEG. So you're going to save it as a JPEG, basically a photograph. Hit save, and it's going to save to my the file that I had, uh, or the folder that I had listed. So then I'm going to go to Google Earth. 
All right, so open my Google Earth, and I've already got it set up to the property uh, where I'm going to be looking at or that I'm interested in, in doing. So I've got this property here, and what I need to do is you'll see these little bits of dialog box here. There's, here's a couple of cool functions for you. So uh, this is a add an image overlay. Uh, so we're, we're going to use this, and then we're also going to use this little slide bar here, this little time slide bar. I've got it activated, but it's this little... <clears throat> this clock here so these are the two things that we're probably going to end up using so I'm going to just click the, the, the timeline here uh, just to kind of show what it what it does and how I use it and then to get that photograph on there we're going to click on this little button here add image overlay so click on that button and then I'm going to browse alright so I've got saved in property lines and I named that file lines so I open up lines and you're going to see that it's just it's going to blow out so you're going to have to adjust the size uh, to where you're at and you have to keep this dialog box open right here because once you close this dialog box what's going to end up happening uh, is that it's the, the photograph basically becomes set and wherever you set it at so I like to move it to the side and then you know, you'll, you'll see as far as just kind of how I adjust this photograph so got the setup here and then from here the way you adjust the, the photograph is you're going to adjust from the corners you can adjust it from the top left and right and this little box here allows you to angle it or kind of in a circle 360 and this little portion here in the middle is how you would move it kind of left to right wherever you need to go so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of keep it in this position here and then I'm just going to start shrinking it up so I can get um, back to that property of where I was at and then I you know <clears throat> uh, then I just kind of adjust it accordingly to where I'm at You'll see this is the this is where the property is at. That's the, the little residence there. So same thing, and then you just kind of adjust it uh, until you get pretty close. Initially, you're just going to eyeball it initially, so you get kind of close to where it's at. So now here's another little thing that I I, I like to do. So. Google Earth likes to almost kind of give you a three-dimensional feel as far as like you're kind of going around the circle of the Earth. Uh, if you click on this portion right here, what it does is you push down and it makes it flat, if that makes any sense. So so you're looking kind of straight down at it as opposed to kind of, you know, a circular or roundish angle. Uh, and you'll need to kind of adjust that at several, uh, several times. And then this bottom portion here on Google Earth will kind of allow you to rotate north to south a little bit to help kind of adjust. Uh, adjust that portion so uh, if you'll see this is as you'll see this is the residence and this is the same house right here right and this is the road and here's the road as well so this is what I was talking about as far as getting these reference points lined up is uh, I use that as a reference point to help me get my uh, my my structures lined up so like reference point one and two are lined up here but you'll notice the house isn't lined up here right so I'll have to kind of attract and adjust uh, you know accordingly to kind of help get that established and this is one of those things that it's just you're gonna have to go back and forth back and forth and uh, up and down and, and kind of play with until you get it adjusted so and one of the other things I like to do as I as I try to get this adjusted is you see this little sliding scale here on the top uh, what this is it's a sliding scale of basically um, these overhead photographs right and it kind of goes back in time so uh, so for instance the most recent photograph that they have for this area is uh, November of 2015 so as you click back uh, it goes back in time so that's October of 2014 uh, April of 2014 and then February of 2013 and so on and so forth right so as we kinda go back in time uh, the reason I, I like that is that more times than not the GIS uh, websites are going to use one typically one of these these overhead photographs or these aerial photographs so you can sometimes find the exact uh, photograph um, that uh, was taken so that they match up perfectly as far as shading and coloring or even like vehicles you may have a vehicle that is in one photograph and it may not be in another photograph so you can kind of use that to help you tie into that uh, you know and some and even like for the buildings too some of the buildings may be shaded a little differently uh, you know once you start kind of zooming in or once you start kind of flattening this out and messing with it so you might like the shading of one of the timelines I, I don't know if you can tell but you know the the color is a little bit different on this this photograph here as far as the shading cons compared to this photograph right so the sun will set it a little differently uh, the shadows are cast a little differently and if you look at the you know this, this photograph here is is the, the shadowing is almost very similar here so I mean to me this is 
uh, this February of 2013, I think these are the same photographs, just kind of based on the shadows of the building. If you can kind of notice it here, there's a shadow here, there's a shadow here. So this is one of those things you're going to have to kind of play with to see, uh, you know, which is best for you. Cause if you look at this, this is pretty much almost straight up and down. Not too much, not too many shadows here, just a little bit uh, on this side, which is very different from here. So it's kind of hard to tell or uh, hard to align it up. So just kind of play with that and see where it's at. But so from here, what we're going to do is we're just going to try and line up this building, uh, line up these structures the best we can as we kind of go through this to kind of get these property lines all set up. So we're going to kind of play, and uh, and this is the part that's going to take the longest to, to kind of eventually do, and I'm not going to sit here and, and uh, bore you with this, but uh, we'll come back. Once I get this lined up, we'll come back and talk about how we transfer this out. All right, so this is the uh, kind of the final lined up product. So if you can kind of see how my reference points right so the road here the road here this road here road here and then the building are all pretty well lined up so you can kind of tell that uh, this is pretty much worth the you know almost the 99 I would say 99 percent uh, solution for this uh, borderline or for this property line on the actual uh, on Google Earth. So from here what we're going to do is we're going to save this because we want to be able to, to look at this on our GPS. So you're going to go to File, Save, and Save Place As. Right. So I'm going to go, uh, as I click on this, it's going to pop up and I'm going to name the property. So I'm going to save it as a KMZ file. For some reason uh, I have trouble opening up the, you're going to have two options here. You're going to have a KMZ file and a KML file. For some reason, I have problems opening up the KML, KML file, so I'm going to save it as a KMZ. So I'm just going to save it as KMZ. I'm going to save it as VA KMZ. Uh, I've already had that file on there, but we're going to save it and replace as. So, so this is now saved as a file that can be read by our, our Garmin GPS. So I'm going to open up Garmin Basecamp. And I'm going to have my uh, Garmin Basecamp. I've already got it set up, and it's set up to to the area that uh, I was just adjusting in Virginia. So, so from here I'm going to go to File and Import into Recently Downloaded. So when you download your file, you can download it into pretty much anywhere. You can straight into My Collection, last week, last month, uh, whatever. So I'm just going to uh, click on the Recently Downloaded, and that's where that file is going to be read onto or downloaded onto. So, so I don't download into it. So I'm going to go uh, va.kmz. I'm going to download that file. And import it in and you're going to see that it's going to automatically kind of fall into these property lines so as you can kind of see right here's the uh, here's the road Let me zoom in just a little bit here all right so as you can kind of see um, here's the road here on the actual GPS itself or, or what the GPS is going to read here this is the other road property line so this is my reference point here's my reference point and this is my reference point right here and this uh, this one looks a little off but uh, you know I think with uh, once you upload it onto your GPS um, you're going to be like I said at that almost 99% uh, location for your property location so this is the land that I'm uh, allowed to hunt on so if I take my GPS out there I can kind of step on it and know exactly where the property line is with my GPS so that I know I'm not, I'm not going over uh, you know one way or the other so uh, that's a way that you can add property lines onto your Garmin GPS uh, a little taxing a little takes a little bit of time but you know I think it's it's a pretty useful tool and I hope uh, I hope you guys use it